My name is Michael Croft. I'm the UNESCO representative in, in Vietnam. Uh, I've been working in Vietnam now for three years. I've been with UNESCO for 22 years, uh, originally from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. And I'm married and I have well, one son. His name is Jack. And as of yesterday, I have a dog called Simba. Why does UNESCO exist globally and what is its role in Vietnam especially? After the Second World War, um, when the member states were founding the United Nations, they were looking at a mechanism basically to prevent a Third World War. And so the, the United Nations and, it, and its uh, things like the Security Council and its main components are very much organized towards peace and the preservation of peace. But they also thought that, um, that so much of the problems that led to the Second World War related to uh, ignorance, uh, racism, um, nationalism. And so UNESCO was founded to, in a way, have a more proactive approach to peace, to peace building. And our constitution really kind of says it quite nicely. So the first, the first phase, phrase of the UNESCO constitution says, since wars begin in the minds of men and women, it is in the minds of men and women that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Um, it's also, in a little bit of more operational terms, UNESCO exists to promote international cooperation in education, science, culture, communication, and media in the service of peace and sustainable development. Why are you passionate about your work? I have, I think, one of the best jobs that you can have in the whole wide world. Um, why am I passionate about my work? Because I, I, I have, first of all, I'm very privileged to do what I do. It's a great privilege and an honor to work for the United Nations. It's a great privilege and honor to work for UNESCO. And what I like about it is, is that um, UNESCO's mandate is, is very broad. Education, science, culture, communication, and, and information. And there's so many things, different things to cover. What that means is that I'm learning all the time. I said when I introduced to myself that I had been working for UNESCO for 22 years, I'm still finding out things about UNESCO. I'm still learning about our programs. So the thing that makes me really passionate is that um, I'm privileged to be able to work in the service of peace and sustainable development. A lot of people do that, but not a lot of people have actual jobs that do that. I have a job, a career, um, that, a salary that allows me to do that. And then the other aspect is that I'm learning all the time. Um, and I get to experience countries in a very, uh, very unique way as a representative, of course, especially because UNESCO, one of the things that UNESCO is mandated for is culture. Um, so I have to explore and, and learn about a country's culture whenever I go to a new country. But being working with UNESCO, we get to do that in a very interesting and a very sort of deep way. So that's a great privilege. And that, so that's why every, I always say that every day when I come to the office, it's like a joy. What is keeping you, UNESCO, busy at the moment? And are there any highlight projects? Mm, well, there's a lot to do in Vietnam. Um, there's a lot going on. But when I say a lot to do, we don't, uh, it's not so much about projects for us. We see our role, um, as the standee beside me would say, as terms of partnership for progress. So what we do is because that where UNESCO, we add value, we think, is that we work with government. Uh, we work with other UN partners, we work with d development partners, we work with the embassies, we work with the private sector, we work with young people. UNESCO, like other UN agencies, is very well placed to do matchmaking. Um, so what we try to do is, uh, usually I say that, we try to form coalitions of the concerned. So if there's an issue, a key, uh, an issue of concern or an opportunity in education, in science, in culture and communication and media, we try to assemble partnerships um, around that concern. So to foster a common understanding between government, private sector, local communities, international partners, etc. And then hopefully once we can help foster a common understanding of that issue, 
then we can foster a common approach. So what we do in Vietnam is we're really um, not so much about projects, but about partnerships. Um, one of the big partnerships that we have now is the, the new designation for, for Hanoi as a creative city. So last year Hanoi became a creative city, the first one in, uh, in, in, in Vietnam. And so what we're doing now is again, we're working with government, international partners, local communities, the private sector, and young people um, to ensure the development of Hanoi in a creative and sustainable way. So that's probably a good, a, good a good example of this sort of partnership approach uh, which the organization is using now in Vietnam. Which SDGs do you think your work impact the most? That's a good question. There's a lot of SDGs and as I said we have a big mandate so I don't think that there's actually any SDG we don't touch on. Of course, SDG 4 education is important for us, as is SDG 5 and gender equality. But I think I would rather um, draw uh, attention to Agenda 2030. For me, Agenda 2030, which is the wider framework which the SDGs are part of, is really the important part. Because Agenda 2030 talks about the why of the SDGs and also the strategy in terms of how how to, how to enable the SDGs. When I talked about partnership, UNESCO facilitating partnership, this is one of the expectations of, uh, the, of Agenda 2030 for the UN. And this is what the member states asked us to do. They asked us not to, um, how, how should I say, not to, not to work on, we continue to work on all the things we've always worked on, but we work on them in a different way, in a more strategic way to facilitate partnerships. There's a lot of uh, players out there, um, if I can put it this way, who can do things in education, who can do things in science and culture. A lot of the real expertise is in the private sector and it's in academia. It's not with the UN agencies. What the UN agencies are really well placed to do though is, is, is facilitate these sorts of partnerships. So for us, um, I would say that actually I would give more attention to Agenda 2030. Um, the SDGs are very important, but they're indicators. It's actually a little bit more important, I think, if we have a better idea of what the plan is and what the strategy is. What do you find challenging in your work, personally and here in Vietnam? It's a challenge, I suppose, but it's, um, it, it's, it comes from the thing that I love. I can get up in the morning and have to maybe do a presentation on um, intangible cultural heritage. Um, in, in Vietnam. Then, uh, before lunchtime, I might have to talk at a seminar about um, hate speech and freedom of information. And then in the afternoon, I could be called to talk about uh, reform of secondary education in Vietnam. And then at the end of the afternoon, I could get pulled into a, a discussion on the World Biosphere Reserves in Vietnam and problems of pollution. So, with the broad mandate, there's a lot of broad activities and so it kind of, and I have to be a little bit of a, I have to be able to speak to these different things, but it's very, very different uh, and difficult, I should say, um, because certainly for some things, especially for the science sector, you either know science or you don't. You can't bluff science. So that's a little bit of a challenge for me, but on the flip side, that's what I, that's what I really like about it. So I have to read quite a bit um, to be able to, to, to be sure that I know at least a little bit of what I'm talking about. And it's very important for me um, when I'm speaking to, because audiences know when you're reading remarks that you've prepared yourself or when you're reading something that somebody else has prepared. If it's an important discussion, I really want to write those remarks, but for me to, to, me to do that, I need to understand what I'm talking about. So I have to spend a lot of time reading and also thinking about what I'm writing about and thinking about why is this important to me um, and why am I telling people about this. Um, so it's, it's a learning process. It takes a bit of time, um, but it's also enjoyable as well. I've had, I've had the opportunity to work uh, in, in a number of different places and, um, and, and, and in, in, I've worked in Africa, I've worked in the Middle East, I've worked in Europe. Um, this is my first, my first posting in Asia Pacific. But um, it's really, it's such a, understanding, understanding people's cultures is, is so different, it's so interesting. One of the things that's quite interesting too is also seeing sometimes the similarities and not so much the differences. 
uh, sometimes I often talk about the fact that um, actually what strikes you when you've been around the world a little bit and worked in the development area for a while, it's not, how, it's not what's different between people, it's actually what's the same. Um, and so that kind of instills within one a bit of a sense of, um, you, you start to sort of maybe identify those things that, that make us human, um, have a better sense of, of our humanity. And I like to think that, um, that, that some of that actually sort of, I can integrate some of those things. But it's, it, it's, it's, it's also having these, um, how should I say, different experiences and also being exposed to different cultural practices or different cultural traditions. That's really very, very, very interesting. Uh, so if I say that it's a passion, I don't want to say that I'm, I, I don't think it's really fair to say that I'm an expert, but I'm really passionate about learning about it. And how might UNIS Hanoi Community and UNESCO work together and connect? In UNIS, um, the student body of UNIS especially represents a lot of talent. Um, w without being a bit cliche about it, we would talk about the leaders, the leaders of tomorrow. And oftentimes when I talk to young people, I say, look, I reference my son Jack, and I say, Jack is three years old. He's going to grow up in a world that was a lot different than the one that I grew up in. And he's going to be um, at a world where, where there's, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of new challenges. And, um, and, it's, and it's the people, people of your generation who are going to be the leaders in Jack's world. And so that's why I, ha I have, in a way, a, a, a professional need to reach out. And, and UNESCO has a professional need to reach out and engage with young people in UNIS and to hear their ideas about some of the things that UNESCO could be doing in Vietnam and also for me to inform a little bit what UNESCO is doing in Vietnam but also I, I feel it a little bit personally too because it's also about Jack's future um, so in ensuring that you the young people of UNIS like the young people everywhere in the country are empowered to articulate what what they think um, and, and their ideas for a better world, that's the best way that I can, I can, I can think of actually to, to help protect Jack and make sure that, that he grows up in a, in, a, in a world that still continues to be a nice place to live. Mm -hmm.